um, it's our pleasure and our it's lovely to have Carolyn here with us this morning. And uh, just a little bit about Carolyn. Um, she is the newly appointed uh, co-director, and I have to read this because I'm going to get the name wrong, <laughs> the co-director of the Satir Center for Becoming More Fully Human at Akamai University. And she's an associate professor with the College of Integrative Health. So, and she's also a senior faculty member of the Banman Satir China Management Center and also um, living in community on a farm on the island. <laughs> so um, here's Carolyn, thank you. Wonderful, thank you. Thanks, Linda and Jennifer, thank you so much. Uh, it's great to see even a farm, farm member, formerly member here. Thanks, Julian, for coming out. And it's also really cool to see two co-authors of our book that we just held in our hot little hands, just um, Leona Gallant and Jennifer Nagel. Thanks. <laughs> Oh, great. Yeah, this is this is my first time ever having a chapter published. And I think Leona's as well. And Jennifer is now uh, can totally fully claim author as she has many books <laughs> under her belt now. It's really cool to see. Thanks. And really good to see all these people that I haven't seen in a while. It's beautiful. Thanks. Thanks for coming out. I am really excited about talking uh, and leading us through an experiential process about couples. What we know is that uh, there is, a, it's like the last few years have been a crucible. They've just been a squeeze on couples to, and couples have come through it uh, because of, because of differences in family, because of differences in opinions, because of differences in how to handle things. And because for a while there, we weren't allowed to see many other people. So uh, everything became a, really a microcosm and, and squeezed and it's um, impacting couples everywhere. So this squeeze can either help a couple grow because they're faced with what's working and what's not working or it can just uh, be the, the the breaking point and as many therapists on here you are seeing that in your offices I'm sure um so today I'd love to take you into using Satir's method to help couples connect into closeness, where we're gonna just do a little piece of it and, and it will be for your own personal reflection. Okay, so here we are. And let's move on. I wanna thank Virginia Satir, for your legacy of wisdom and light and invite you down to come on into the room and channel through me if you would like to do that. I am willing and open. I'd like to thank Dr. John Banman. He has been a mentor and a friend and a colleague and, and not has been in the past, is all those things. Uh, and the founder of Satir Institute of the Pacific. And I want to thank all the people who have um, are continuing his uh, legacy that he built. And really, thanks, guys, for having me here. I appreciate Dr. Mary Jo Bulbrick. And this is the, it's really cool in North Carolina that University is not like a big brick place. It's this really welcoming, cool place. I got the privilege, the chance to go out there for nine days and um, be amongst so many of Virginia's things. Uh, 
so many of her letters. I was presented with her moccasins. I got to walk in her moccasins and um, they're, they've got little rabbit fur on them, lots of beading and they are well worn. So that was very cool too. And so here's um, Mary Jo and I uh, at the, at that center. Yeah. And I want to thank each of you for showing up. It's uh, really wonderful to know that each part of us that we bring into a loving, open, curious state is impacting the world. So when in doubt, choose love. That's what I can say. My objectives for today are to look at relationship satisfaction. It's a piece of the puzzle. We're going to apply Virginia Satir's teachings to yourself. I hope to teach these experientially and that we get to connect to ourselves and each other. How will we do this? Um, we'll be assessing intimacy issues. I don't mean by that, I don't mean sexuality or sex so much as I mean intimate. What sets a couple apart from a community? What's What do we find in coupledom that we don't find in singledom? What is it? Um, so how do we assess our intimacy issues in a relationship? What is a what, what's a way that we can do that? I'm going to use a guided meditation to take you through the Satir iceberg on one of these issues. And we'll use breakout rooms to look at the yearnings and other things and have a question and answer period at the end. Whoops. So I'd like you to take out a pen and paper and just draw a circle and divide it into eight parts. And you can pull out some um, colored pencils too if you want, but um, I'll just give you a chance to do that. Just any old piece of paper or your journal, divide it into eight parts. And let's take a look. Oh, and I'm gonna just grab my writing piece. So when we're looking at issues within the couples, we, what we want to do is when I talked about what sets a couple apart, there's many issues that couples have conflict on and that couples connect in to each other with that are different than what a friendship would be. So as we're going through this, I'd like you to think back to either uh, a relationship that you're in or a relationship that you've been in in the past, any relationship, whichever one that is popping up for you right now might be the one to look at. It could be someone even from 20 years ago or 10 years ago. Um, maybe the first one you had in, in high school or your 20s. Whenever, whenever that is whatever one pops up for you. Take a look at that one. And now we're going to label each part. These parts are, what I would ask a couple to do at the beginning is what are their places where they either have conflict or connection or desire more. And, and I'll list them out. So these eight, somewhat follow the satir mandala but they don't uh because there's pieces in here that are yeah that and so they can be replaced is what i'm saying some of us meet in the intellectual place you can write these down in here uh write the labels in when we talk about intellectual ideas when we're looking at relationship satisfaction 
We're talking about discussing things, learning new things, reading and talking. And if you'd like, I'm, as I go through them, I'm going to have you color them in like this. You can see how maybe um, I've colored this one in because I'm super satisfied with it. I am colored this one in here because I'm somewhat satisfied. And I'm coloring this one in just to here because I'm only, I'm so, I'm pretty dissatisfied with it. So we end up coloring them in. So you can color them in as we go along and I describe them. Let's see how that goes. So coloring in the emotional one. Is that something that's important um, for you? in a relationship, in this relationship, satisfaction wise. It doesn't mean that you are always discussing. It means you're, or never discussing. It means that you're satisfied with the level of stimulation in your relationship. Discussing ideas, learning new things, reading and talking about things. Let's move into the emotional part. Uh, it doesn't mean the satisfaction part doesn't mean that you're always happy. What it means is that you are free to express the full spectrum of positive and what you might see as positive and negative emotions, the full spectrum of emotions. Are you free to express them? Are you satisfied with the amount of freedom of expression? How satisfied are you? And filling that in. Moving into physical. Uh, physical is separate than sexual. Physical is the, the touching we do on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, in, indoors, outdoors, um, with other people, um, by ourselves, the touching skin to skin, how the, the touch on the shoulder, the holding hands, the touch on the cheek, the, the, the hugs, how satisfied are you with the, the physical sphere of your, the, the physical part of your uh, couple's relationship and filling that in moving into the sexual how satisfied are you with the, the full spectrum of possibilities here the giving the receiving the exploration of possibilities the the clear boundaries how satisfied are you with this Moving into financial, I don't mean oh we're at the top. Um, this wouldn't this wouldn't mean oh we are super wealthy. Oh we're not so wealthy. Oh we're very poor. It's about the satisfaction of um, our discussion and our handling of our finances together. So. How satisfied are you with how we talk about it, how we deal with it, how, how it's all together there? Uh, financial issues with couples are one of the top things that they come in with. Um, it might not be the top thing that they talk about. We might talk about the, who does the dishes, but there is usually a big financial peace in there with couples who gets to spend who gets to say what they spend um the spiritual moving into that your exploration as a couple is this important to you the talking the doing the being the transcendence are you on the same page are, are you free to explore 
and to practice. Moving into dating. Are you satisfied with your dating relationship? Are you doing unique things? Are you doing fun things? Is it planned? Is it unexpected? How is your time, your quality time with each other? And this last piece can be, um, you can fill it in with a different label if there's something else that comes up for you. Uh, there's so many other things we could put in there. Lots of the love languages that uh, from Gary Chapman we could put in there. Um, I chose time with others as a couple because that's sometimes where couples bond together or fall apart. They can tend to be with others and you wouldn't even know that they were together. Um, one couple had come in and she'd said mm, they were out at a dance, at dance lessons and switching partners, switching partners. And one woman came up and said to her, oh, I really have my eye on that man. And she said, that man is my husband. <laughs> and so they'd been going to the dance classes for weeks and nobody even knew they were a couple. So sometimes time with others as a couple, others, others, that's when they really feel that they bond together as they're hosting, they host other people at their own dinner parties and they feel really close doing it. So how satisfied are you? Or you can put your own label in there. And in the end, I imagine that you might have something that looks somewhat like this. So all, um, some at the top are very satisfying. Others are uh, mediocre and some have barely a little dot in them as far as satisfaction goes. We've done that. So I'd like you to choose one part that is filled in about halfway. And I'm going to whoops, I'm going to stop my sharing now only again, my pointer isn't working. Um, I guess I guess we can just leave it. I don't need to stop sharing. I'll just leave it here. And I invite you to um, choose what we're going to do is choose one of these like this. So let's not choose this one to explore. And let's not choose this one to explore. Let's choose one of the ones that's about halfway. And I invite you just to hold that in your mind. And coming into your center, breathing it in and allowing your body to relax into your chair, closing your beautiful eyes, and bringing this piece of your relationship to the forefront. And as you do, what's happening in your body? Just notice, where are you with that? Our body gives us so many messages. And breathing in to your body. Breathing into that place in your body. And 
and allowing yourself to notice what emotions come up. That's the way. And naming possibly more than one. And are there any emotions associated with these emotions? Any feelings about your feelings? And as you think about this piece of your your circle, that piece of your relationship. I invite you to bring up the perception that you have of yourself in this piece. I am what? I have what? I am not what? And from my point of view, my partner is what? They're not what? And can I trust them? In this area. And in this area, am I lovable? And in my family, my culture, the rules about this area are what? What are they? I really should what? And I should not what? Am 
my partner should what? My partner should not. What I really, really long for is is it freedom? Is it to be acceptable? Is it to be seen? To be valued? To be cherished? To be honored? What is it? What am I most longing for? What do I have inside me? What do I have inside me that will help me ask for this? What are my resources? Is it courage? Is it kindness? Is it integrity? Wisdom? What is my, what's going to accompany me as I seek? What I know that needs to happen in this relationship. And finally, can I, can I give myself some tenderness, some compassion? For the ways that I have tried. Tried to be seen. Tried to be cherished. Tried to be valued. And if I can see and cherish and value myself in this moment, right now, And noticing where that is in my body. What's happening in my body now? Has it changed? 
Has it shifted? What's happened now? What am I noticing? Is it the same? Is it the same as when we started, the same place? And as you open your beautiful eyes and come back to the room, we're going to take a minute, let you write down whatever you'd like to write. And we're going to shift into breakout rooms.